Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel GST in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your work, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from JL. Lately I find myself starting to like the bag slash pattern slash material that I disliked, probably due to exposure to YouTube videos. For example, Givenchy Antigona, Louis Vuitton Demi Azur, and Diorama have grown on me. Do you have similar experiences? If so, what are the bags and does that feeling gradually fade? <laughs> this is a wonderful question. Um, all right, so have I had similar experiences? Absolutely I have with four bags that I currently own in my collection. The first one is the Louis Vuitton Alma BB, the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini, the Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 Bandolier, and the Chanel Mini in the lambskin, um, in the black lambskin. All right, so in my experience, um, what ended up happening was when those bags came out, uh, more so the Louis Vuitton ones, I remember seeing so many people rave about them. They were just like thinking they're the greatest things since sliced bread. Anytime I saw a review on them, people were just like, oh my God, you have to have this bag. You have to have this bag. It's amazing. It does this, it does that. And um, sometimes I didn't really fall into the hype. I was just like, I don't get it. Why, why, why does everybody want this bag? What is so special about this? bag. I would go into the boutiques, I try it on and I'm just like, oh no, I can't pull it off. It do doesn't really work out for me, blah, blah, blah. But then <laughs> I have found that the more we talked about it on Minx Monday, the more I saw it on Instagram, the more I saw it on YouTube, like you said, I was even more intrigued by it. I was just like, oh man, yeah, this bag, it, it's starting to make sense, you know? So the more I watched it, it was like, oh, I didn't think of that before. I didn't think of this. I didn't think of that, you know? And, um, I, you know, I will admit, I thought people were crazy for liking some of the designs, you know? And I was almost like, I was almost like just stuck on, no, this bag is not going to work out for me. But like I said, uh, we talked about it quite a few times and the more I researched it, the more that bug started to just say, oh, maybe it does work out for you. And now I have those three Louis Vuitton bags <laughs> in my collection. <laughs> so does it fade? I think it fades once you add the bag to your collection. Um, I don't know if you guys have experienced this as well or if you, if you had that same type of thing happen and you decided against the bag, you know, but um, I don't, I don't know what it is, you know, sometimes it just takes um, someone saying something that just, just clicks and you're just like, oh, it makes total sense about this bag now. And two out of those uh, three Louis Vuitton bags, I use to death. That being the Palm Springs Mini, which I remember, I don't know if you guys remember, I'd always say, I don't know, it's not really for me. I think it's super cute. It's not for me. It's not for me. And now I am all about that bag, you know, and same thing with the Speedy 25 Bandolier. However, I am still a classic speedy girl at heart. Always, always will be. But the, I mean, come on, you can't beat the fact that it's, I mean, it's cross body and you could be hands free. <laughs> so I don't know. I, it's, I'm, I'm not the best person to, to ask for this question, you know, because I'm, I failed. I failed. And those three bags have really just made, um, have made me very, very happy. And when it came to the Chanel lambskin, like I've said before, if you would have asked me five years ago if I would ever go for lambskin, I would have said, absolutely not. You know, and it took a small leather good to try out to see if it worked out for my lifestyle. And I couldn't be happier because I absolutely, I mean, love and fell head over heels for lambskin leather. So I think it goes away once you add the bag, <laughs> once you add the bag or you find out that it works for your lifestyle. Because I think that there's still that, that chance that even though you like it and now you might think about adding it to your collection, once you do, it might still not work out for you. But um, <laughs> yeah. That's what ended up working out with me. Uh, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this question. Uh, what are some of the things that you decided to do as far as um, did you go for the bag and are you happy with the bag? Sometimes it's the ones that we never think that we'll like that are the ones that end up being our favorites or our forever bags. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Kay Starlow. I am new to luxury goods and I have been watching a lot of luxury YouTubers and I was wondering why so many people, including yourself, buy multiple and duplicate small leather goods from the same and different fashion houses. 
For example, a small change purse in different prints and from four different fashion houses. Is it because you want them to match your bags or is it another reason? Is it cumbersome to change out many small leather goods and how often do you change them? Daily or weekly or some other schedule? Uh, this is a fantastic question and uh, I can't speak for any other YouTuber, but for myself, yes, I am guilty of buying the same thing in multiple prints uh, or from, the, from different fashion houses if they have the same type of function. Function. And um, really I do it for two different reasons. The first one being that uh, I've always said that when it comes to uh, maybe venturing into a new fashion house or if you want to try out a different type of leather, I always try to go for the smaller the goods first because I feel that with those, you can really get a feel for um, how they'll end up wearing over time. Because with small of the goods, you interact with them a lot more and you end up getting a lot more uh, wear than you do with a handbag. You know, so if I can tell that with, um, for example, I don't know, Epi Leather, uh, I go for a small of the good and it doesn't really work out for me with that item, I might be a little bit more apprehensive to add a bag in Epi Leather just because of the experience that I had with, uh, with a small of the good. So that's one one of the reasons. I always try to go for small other goods first, see how I like them, and then go for a handbag in that type of print or that type of leather. And the other reason is because a lot of you know that when it comes to my handbags, I tend to go for very simple, very classic designs. It's either a black handbag or a brown handbag, but with small leather goods, I'm a lot more adventurous. I want to be able to see those pops of color. And in a sense, I kind of get my color fix uh, by going for a hot pink small leather good versus going for a hot pink handbag that I might not be so um, fond of, you know, within a, a month or two or what have you. But with small other goods, I get to, it's almost like the best of both worlds, you know what I mean? So uh, I like to be able to open up my handbag and see those beautiful pops of color. And uh, as far as being matchy-matchy, I very seldomly do that. For example, if I have a monogram handbag, I don't necessarily like to go for all monogram small leather goods. I like to be able to see a variety of different brands as well as a variety of different colors. Uh, I know some people definitely like to go matchy-matchy, but for me, um, very seldomly do I do that. Now, is it cumbersome to change out some of my some of my small leather goods and how often do I change them? Uh, it really depends because when it comes to the uh, my round coin purse, my six ring key holder, and sometimes even my mini pochette, those I'll end up using for extended periods of time just because um, sometimes I'll even use them for like a month, month and a half, two months. I know that my six ring key holder, I haven't switched it out in, I don't know, almost a year maybe? No, less than that. Um, but anyways, it's been a long time. Uh, but the ones that I switch out most often are my wallet or a catch-all. Um, those are the ones that I end up incorporating the most as far as pops of colors go. Uh, so it's all, I mean, it all depends on the mood. It all depends on the type of color that I want to see in the handbag. Sometimes I like to have um, a very bright contrast with the type of handbag that I'm carrying. I don't know, but it's not, it's definitely not fussy. For me, it might sound kind of crazy. I almost find it therapeutic to be able to sit in my room and just kind of go throughout, go through my small leather goods and switch it out. Um, but I have it down to a science, so it takes me, it takes me seconds to go from one wallet, from one small other good to another. So, so it's definitely not a bother to do it. Uh, it all depends on my mood. It all depends on just, um, you know, what it is that I want, want to see when I open up my handbag. Uh, but this is a fabulous question. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. If you want to share, uh, share them with us on the comment section down below, that would be fantastic. But again, wonderful, wonderful question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Shay A. You have a beautiful collection of handbags and small leather goods. Thank you so much. But do you ever feel overwhelmed or get anxiety over the amount of goods that you have? Uh, this is a fantastic question. And I feel that I can honestly say that I've never had anxiety or the overwhelming sensation when it comes to the items that I own, especially since I downsized my collection. I feel that I'm able to, uh, I, I'm able to rotate my items a lot more often. And um, I thoroughly enjoy the, the collection that I have. And even though I might have some, I might use uh, some small leather goods for extended periods of time, when I do go to rotate, rotate them. It's not necessarily because I have to uh, or it's driving me crazy. It's more so because I want to or I want to see a different pop of color or something to that effect. So as far as anxiety and um, having that overwhelming overwhelming sensation, I have not. Uh, but this is a fantastic question. I would love to know if some of you guys feel that. And if you do, what do you do to kind of change that, uh, to change that feeling? Uh, if you want to let us know in the comment section down below, I would appreciate it. But once again, a fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. 
Next question from Anthea H. I noticed that you do not own the famous Louis Vuitton Stephen Sprouse Leopard Stole as part of your lovely scarf collection. Is there a reason why? I do own one and I love it. I would love to know why you have passed on this item. Uh, this is a great question. And when it comes to Louis Vuitton Stephen Sprouse Leopard Stole, that is a mouthful. I think it is a fantastic item. And anytime I see it on someone, I think it looks fabulous. It's very generous in size and you can use it various ways. So I think uh, I love that aspect about it and some of the colors as well. But unfortunately for me, I cannot pull leopard print to save my life. It looks, I don't know, I just, I can't do it. And I think when it comes to prints, um, because I grew up in the 90s and I know that at one point in time, actually maybe it was the 2000s, I'm definitely dating myself, uh, but I know like zebra print and leopard print and cheetah print was super, super popular. And um, I would more so just kind of gravitate towards the zebra print out of those three, but either way, I couldn't pull it off. It look, I just, it doesn't look right on me. But when I see it on someone else, I'm like, oh, it looks so, so good, you know? And the fact, again, that you can use it so many ways, I love that. But um, <laughs> I just cannot do it justice. I definitely can't. And I've tried, trust me. I have tried multiple times um, when I've had the opportunity to try it on and it just, um, it just, <laughs> it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And I don't feel comfortable when I have it on because I feel that I'm trying way too hard. <laughs> so oh, I have to, um, I have to appreciate it from afar. So unfortunately it is not for me, but I am so, so happy that uh, you are loving yours, but fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Ji Yoon Jung. Hopefully I said that correctly. I have a feeling I butchered your name, so my apologies. Uh, what do you think of the new Givenchy GB3 bag? It comes in three sizes. At first, I didn't like it, but now it grows on me. I think in Europe, it's more popular than in the States. Uh, this is a fantastic question, and I do have a couple pictures of the Givenchy GB3 bag. I absolutely love it. I think it is fantastic. And I had an opportunity to try it on when we were in Las Vegas. I went into the Givenchy Boutique and I think it is a beautiful, beautiful bag. Uh, I did post a couple, um, I did post it on my Insta stories. And some of the feedback that I got on it, some people felt that it was a little too simple. Some people felt that it was a little uh, underwhelming um, for the price point that it has. I believe that the one that I was looking at, uh, because uh, as you said, there are three different sizes. I think that they're um, 1900 50, the one that I looked at. Don't quote me on it. I could be completely wrong. Um, but I really like it. It kind of reminds me of the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse. It does have different compartments. Um, very, very simple. And the chain, um, it, you're able to use it crossbody. You're, use it, you're able to use it on your shoulder. And uh, I really, the thing that I appreciate about this bag the most is the fact that they have the old school Givenchy logo on the front. And I think it looks incredible. Um, some of them come in the pebbled leather. I believe the smaller ones and the larger ones have more suede on it. That's the only thing that kind of deters me from adding it to my collection, just because I'm not too crazy about having suede on the exterior of my handbag. I'd rather have it on the interior, uh, but I, I think it's beautiful. And I can't remember the price points to save my life. Um, I think it was like 1350 or 1450, 1900, somewhere along those lines. Uh, but an all leather handbag, beautiful, beautiful hardware. And um, it does have a little, um, like a little metal tag, like a little bag charm that comes with it. That's, that's small and it says Givenchy on it, but I think it is beautiful. I know it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, uh, but I, I don't know. Whether you go for the black with the ruthenium hardware or um, they have like a, like a cognac with the gold hardware that looks incredible. They have so many different warm colors to go with the, with the gold hardware. And um, they had a red and they also had the black, as I mentioned before, when it comes to the ruthenium. Maybe I might be mixing them up, so I'm not being very helpful at the moment. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bag, and the craftsmanship is definitely there. Um, I think that this bag will be extremely popular within the next couple of months, 
And, um, you know, um, when I was talking to the sales associate there, she said that she had a feeling it would also become a very trendy bag uh, within the next uh, within the next year. So only time will tell, but I think it is fabulous. So if you love it, I say go for it. But hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Lux Lab Life. Is there anywhere you wouldn't carry your designer handbags? Uh, this is a fantastic question. And it actually stemmed from the fact that Lux Lab Life had gone into a tattoo parlor uh, and after the tattoo parlor, she met with friends and um, there was a lady sitting next to them and she had commented on the fact that she couldn't believe that she had taken her uh, her handbag into a place like that, talking about uh, the tattoo parlor. Uh, so is there anywhere that I wouldn't carry my handbags? Um, I don't think so. Although there might be times when I might not carry the handbag and I'll go to use a small leather good instead. Um, or other times when I don't want to attract as much attention, I'll go for something a little bit more or understated but for the most part I feel that I'm always carrying something you know what I mean I don't know um, and I actually asked Robert yesterday I said is there is there a place where you can think of that I haven't used um, my handbag or a small leather good or anything like that you know and he just started giving me different scenarios and I said no I would end up using this or I'd end up using that but somehow <laughs> I felt that you know, one of those items would always end up in my hand. Case in point, when I go fishing, yes, I've told you guys before, I love to go fishing, but when we go fishing, I use my mini pochette. Uh, and in there, I have uh, a card holder with my uh, driver's license, my fishing license, I have a lip balm and a lipstick, and gum. <laughs> That's usually what I end up carrying with me, and of course, uh, my keys. But I feel like somehow I always have the item, some kind of item with me, you know, whether it's a little bit louder because of the print that it is, or whether it's a little bit more understated um, if I want to go for something that's all leather or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, I think that, um, no, I usually carry something. So not always a handbag, but something. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Emily E. Like you, I do like the Gucci Marmont style, but because of this heart shape at the back, it makes me kind of go off of it. Question, if they will edit the style and remove this heart shape, will you consider to purchase this? Uh, this is a great, great question. And uh, like I've said before, I am a huge fan of the Gucci Marmont. I love the hardware. I love the silhouette that it has. Uh, even the leather, a lot of people rave about how durable it is. Um, and also a lot of people haven't experienced too much uh, color transfer on some of the lighter uh, on some of the lighter ones, so I think that's awesome. Uh, but that heart shape definitely puts me off. So if they decided to take that heart off completely and offer it in that sense, absolutely, I would add that item to my collection. It just I don't know what it is about that heart. I know we had this discussion uh, on Minx Monday a few weeks ago, but um, if they just got rid of that or gave you the option to not have the heart. If you wanted to go for the heart, then, you know, then go for it. But if they had the option, I would be all about this bag. And I think I would probably end up going for that green one. I never thought in a million years I would say I want a green handbag. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I really like the combination of the green with the gold. I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't know what's happening. I feel like my tastes are changing, I mean, radically sometimes, but, um, Anywho, <laughs> that's a whole different story. But as far as adding it, if they got rid of the heart, absolutely I would. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Uh, all right, next one from uh, Vicky Zog. Will you be jumping on the clear PVC bag train? Uh, this is a great question. And um, like I've said before, I'm a really big fan of the of the plastic or the clear bags. I love it. I always loved it when I was younger. Anytime I saw a bag like that, uh, considering that I was also the girl that had, uh, do you guys remember jellies? The, like those jelly sandals, they were plastic, they were different colors. I had those jellies in every single color and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, so I've always been a big fan of that. Um, however, I think as much as I like it, I don't foresee myself getting any type of clear handbag. Uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, like I've said before, I can appreciate it from afar, uh, but this is pretty much as clear as I get. And this is the L&M, the feline toe. I've used it a couple of times uh, when we've gone to the pool, when we've gone to the beach, um, you know, and I've put a few items in there. But for the most part, I think it comes down to the fact, and it might be, it might be something that's, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, uh, and this is definitely not a knock against anyone who has a clear bag. So please don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. Um, but 
I think that when it comes to the clear bags, I don't really want anyone else to know what it is that I'm carrying inside of my handbag. And when I look inside of my bag, I get really excited because I have this type of small leather good, I have this type of color or whatever, and it brings me joy to open up my bag and see those colors, but I'm not so sure if I necessarily want the entire world to see what it is that I'm carrying with me. You know, I don't, I don't know, maybe it doesn't make sense because like I said, I end up using this when we go to the beach, when we go to the pool, um, and even then, I'm, I'm a little bit more selective on what it is that I carry in there. But for the most part, I, I, feel like, I feel like a handbag should be some type of a mystery. I don't know. Am I alone on this? Maybe I am. <laughs> but there should be some type of mystery to what you're carrying. And um, yeah, I want to be the only one that knows myself and the people that I share my bag spills with on Instagram what it is that I'm carrying inside of my bag or when I do what's in my bag videos but um, as far as having them out and about I don't know I don't feel I don't feel super super comfortable so um, unfortunately I will not be joining the PVC bag train but I and I love it on other people I think it looks beautiful but just my own paranoia doesn't let me <laughs> doesn't really let me enjoy it so hopefully that was able to answer your question next question from Johanna Cervantes wedding season is coming if you could only purchase one clutch which one would it be I'm torn between the Louis Vuitton Felici the Chanel wallet on chain the YSL clutch or the YSL wallet on chain? This is a fabulous question and I think that all four of them are fantastic for different reasons. I love the fact that the Felici and the YSL wallet on chain, you can take off the chain completely so it makes it a little bit more versatile. You can use it as a clutch or you can use it as a little mini handbag. And uh, I also am a big fan of the Chanel wallet on chain. A lot of you guys know that. It's one of the best purchases I have ever made from the fashion house. Now even though the three of those are great, this might surprise you, but for specifically wedding season, I prefer the YSL monogram clutch. I think it is a beautiful, beautiful bag and I actually used to own one and uh, that is the time that I would end up you know, kind of busting it out. It was for a very formal event or for weddings. And other than that, it ended up sitting on my shelf. You know, not saying that the other three wouldn't be great for weddings at all, because I do consider them to be very, very versatile. Uh, and if you're looking for versatility, something that you can use at a wedding or other aspects of your life, then I think that the other three are, are great uh, pieces to go for. Uh, but I don't know what it is about the YSL monogram clutch. I don't know if it's because it's just the simplicity that it has. I feel that it speaks volumes. I feel that it's very, very elegant in that type of setting. And whether you go for the black, whether you go for the beige, um, I just really like it, you know, and uh, you're still able to carry your essentials in there. It's not, uh, it's not too gaudy and it still has that type of wow factor without it being a little too overwhelming. You know what I mean? So um, I just, I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but again, if you want something a little bit more versatile, not that the YSL monogram clutch is not versatile and that you can't dress it up or dress it down, not saying that at all, but if you want something just a tad more versatile for the price point, I would recommend the other three. Um, uh, but if you're looking specifically for something for a formal event or for um, you know the type of uh, the type of atmosphere that you want to carry just something a little bit more elegant, then I would end up going for the YSL monogram clutch. So <laughs> whichever one you choose, I think that they are beautiful, but that is just the one that I would end up leaning towards. So hopefully that was able to help. And the last question from Rose Jackson Spicer, hopefully I said that correctly. What do you think of the checkered Lady Dior for summer 2018? It gives me Vans vibes, which remind me of you. Uh, this is a fantastic question, and I do have a picture of the checkered Lady Dior for summer 2018, and I will insert that right now. I'm kind of digging this bag, all right? I'm kind of digging it. It's way different from something that I would add to my collection, but um, maybe it is because of the whole Vans vibes. That's immediately what I thought of when I saw it. I think it's beautiful. Uh, I know that Bunny, or Graveyard Girl, she did a um, she did a reveal on her, um, on her channel, and I think I appreciate it even more so. I love the fact that it comes with that guitar strap. Uh, it does have that very soft leather. It's very edgy, it's very, um, 
it's a very interesting piece. So would I necessarily add it to my collection? Probably not, only because, as I've said before, I am somewhat on the safe side when it comes to my handbags, but I definitely think it is a very, very fun piece nonetheless. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. I really like just that guitar strap on its own or the strap in general. Um, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm very curious to go into the Dior boutique and see if I can just get the strap and maybe add that to another one of my handbags, maybe this guy or even the Givenchy Antigona. I think it would be kind of fun to just kind of mix and match different fashion houses. I don't know, but. Um, that strap is definitely what attracts me the most about that bag. Uh, so great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. I know I felt like I was getting tongue-tied all the time. I don't, I don't know why I can't speak properly lately. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, um, I do have a couple videos for you guys this week. Like I said last week, my schedule's kind of all over the place, but I hope that you guys can understand. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.